Welcome to another Going Beyond the Scale. Um, Friday, I'm going to be looking to having chats with you guys about food on Fridays. If you've not been here to see any of the Going Beyond the Scale episodes, primarily what I'm working with is talking about everything, quite frankly, beyond just weighing yourself. Because what I'm looking to do over a period of time is have people have a whole different relationship with their mind and their body and their bathroom scale, especially. And so there's going to be lots of conversations around what I call creating a life that you love and living it well. So the idea behind going beyond the scale is really looking at looking at your life from a much broader sense, not just your size, your shape, your exercise and what you eat. And as I mentioned early on in this, I will be talking about those things as well. So I thought today would be a great day to do it. And I thought it would be a great way to start the idea of conversations about food because I kind of look at Fridays as the best of times and the worst of times from my previous uh, way of thinking and eating. Um, Fridays for a lot of people as the day that they are like they've done everything they can all week long, quote unquote, to be good. And then Friday's the, the day of like, ah, like I've been so good all week long. I want to make sure like over the weekend, I, I really could, you know, I just want to kind of treat myself a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. So the way I look at it is if we look at Fridays, it's kind of like a, a day of freedom, a, a day to think about, you know, what have I done through the week? And what might I be willing to do over the weekend to maybe stay on whatever particular plan that I want to be on? Or I want to really celebrate what I've done um, over the weekend in some particular way. So I've just found over the years and in conversations I've had with lots of people, Fridays are really this time that people have a challenging time to really stay on their plan or start a plan or whatever. On the flip side, I would also say Fridays are a great time for people that are the Mondays people. You know, I've, I've done a whole podcast about the idea of, of um, you know, there's no great day. There's no perfect day for when you start eating. But I will say for many people, they're still hooked into thinking they've got to start on a Monday. So if you're a Monday person, Friday is a great time for you to get your head wrapped around what would I want to do over the weekend to maybe enjoy a couple of things that maybe I wouldn't normally do if I wanted to you know, go on a particular plan. Or what would I do to set myself up powerfully so that when Monday came around, I was prepared in a way that I could really feel good about starting my Monday on, on a, a good plan. So I'm, I think, you know, as I've been thinking about it, doing these things every day, um, you know, say 10, 15 minutes live, uh, I think Fridays is going to be a really good time to have this conversation. So uh, a little background, being somebody that's challenged both my weight my entire life and then having gotten to the point where I was up at 435 pounds and climbing, that was my top weight ever that was on a scale. Um, I've had my whole, you name it, I've tried it, done it, I've eaten it. I've been on every kind of plan, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, um, Paleo, keto, um, Jenny Craig, um, Atkins, ev South Beach, every single thing you can think of, I've tried. And on Biggest Loser, um, there wasn't a quote unquote diet other than the fact that we were tracking what we were eating. We were measuring our calories. That was the only thing we really were make sure we were doing. Um, we ate really good quality food. We ate food from Whole Foods. We had some um, special foods that we could get from Trader Joe's. But we were making our own food, tracking what we were eating, eating pretty what I would call clean. We were paying attention to our calories, paying attention to our macros. And in a controlled environment, it's pretty easy, quite frankly, to stay on a plan. We couldn't you know, sneak off to a, a drive through We couldn't get into 7-Eleven and mainline on a bunch of stuff. Um, you could binge eat if you really wanted to, but you were going to be pretty much binge eating good quality food. Most of us that have had an issue with binge eating or secret eating, we're not binge eating on fruit and healthy things. We're like carb loading, going crazy, eating bags of chips, you know, everything under the sun. So one of the things that, that I have done over the years in people that I've been able to support or navigate around um, what they're eating I kind of have become for my own 
education process kind of a guinea pig, learning and trying to understand what kinds of things work well for me. And I also really love what Ethan Souple, who has an amazing podcast called American Glutton. You've seen probably Ethan in lots of movies, very famous actor. He's incredible. His personal transformation is just unbelievable. It's so inspiring. If you ever seen him, he's like, I mean, I know people get freaked out if you use the word fat, but if you saw him, he was like a big fat guy, like a really enormous guy. And now if you look at him, he's like crazy jack built, muscular. You're like, oh my God, what an amazing transformation. And what I love about Ethan is his podcasts are very real. They're very transparent. He's very honest about what he's done. He's been up and down the scale. He's had challenges. Um, but what I love is what he says is the best diet is whatever you're willing to do. What is it you would stay on? And when I use the term diet, I like to use it in a broad sense. Um, there are tactical diets to specifically do regimented things to lose weight. They work, it's, whether it's calorie reduction, what, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. I mean, for the most part, when you really get down to it, you can come up with every kind of a thing you can think of, but for the most part, it, it is some form of reducing your intake, increasing your outtake in terms of your metabolic rate. But for the most part, what I found for me, I if you watch anything that I do on my Instagram account, the Smartphone Fit J account, um, that's a place for myself that I'm tracking what I'm doing. I'm paying attention. I'm trying to keep an idea of what I'm doing visually. It's my visual journal. I've been doing that now for over 10 years. That's the place that I do a lot of things. And if you look at what I'm preparing and sharing, I love to eat and I love to cook. And a lot of what I make and eat is like pretty, pretty delicious if you look at it. And what I've been able to do since Biggest Loser is do a pretty good job of maintaining a range of weight for a long period of time where I dropped a ton of weight and I've stayed in this zone for, for years. So I've become masterful at maintenance, which is really, really important for what you want to be able to do long term, no matter what you're doing overall. But one of the things that I seem, at least for me, what seems to really work is I find I feel better, I have more energy, and things seem to go better when I don't eat lots of carbs. It's made a major difference for me um, when, I, when I'm not eating a lot of carbs. So I've always kind of leaned more towards an Atkins approach, a paleo approach, a carnivore approach, um, something along that line. It's really made a difference for me. And I have experimented at times with keto. I like keto, but to be perfectly honest, I've never stayed on keto 100%. I've had this great intention to do it, but I've never stayed on it 100%. And one of the things that I did is recently, I I'd started seeing this book called Dirty Lazy Keto by Stephanie Laska. Um, and I bought the book. I'm about halfway through reading the book. And what I was intrigued with it was the fact that she's been successful. She was up around 300 pounds. She's lost 140 pounds. She's really maintained that. And she has some pretty good books, a cook, couple of cookbooks that I got, Dirty Cheap Cookbook that she has. And then there's one that, uh, another one, a couple of cookbooks that she has. What I like about her keto, now I've not done much of it yet. It's kind of new for me. So I was sharing this today because my plan is over the next few weeks to follow her um, philosophy, which is she does keto, but she's a little less stringent. A lot of keto is like really crazy, really high fat and watching the protein. I tend to find every time I do keto, I'm okay with the fat, but I tend to eat more protein than you're supposed to. And so I'm very curious to see what her particular plan does and how it is different. If it's the kind of thing that I can kind of get the, in between what I would call the paleo keto, keto approach. So I'm gonna to continue to do like what I do on Smartphone Fit, which is really track what I'm doing visually, if you, you look at it. And I wanna see how this works out because I think it could be an interesting approach for what, at least for me, seems to work. So I'm not advocating keto. I'm not advocating any quote unquote diet. The reason why I opened this conversation up today is because I really wanted to be able to get people to kind of share what they're doing, share things that they've seemed to work for them um, in terms of not only quote unquote losing weight, 
but what is a way of eating? What is the way in which you seem to become comfortable that it seems to be a lifestyle for you, something that you can really be able to do on an ongoing basis, something that you would be able to do as a lifestyle. So everything that I've been doing for myself has been more around a lifestyle. I have found a nice window where I can pretty well maintain my weight. I personally have some further weight loss goals that I have said that I've wanted to do and I've had an intention to do, but I haven't, to be perfectly frank, I haven't been what I would call committed to get them accomplished but I am committed in this year to accomplish them. I've talked about it. If you've been watching me, I've said it, I'm gonna do it, I'm starting to stop. Uh, I have not done what I said I wanted to do. That's just the, the God's honest truth about it. I have maintained my weight really well, so I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I have found a way to do that. And I will tell you, I don't care what you wanna do, if you do wanna lose weight, you do want to find a place that you can be comfortable. So I have no shame. I have no regret. I don't have any like hatred. The fact that I'm not at that particular goal weight that I like to be at because having been somebody been well over 400 pounds and climbing, I'm nowhere near that now. And I'm very comfortable and I feel great and I have energy and I have vitality at this weight. But I do know that if I go closer and closer to this goal weight that I have in mind, that I'm going to feel even better. And I think it's gonna be even more exciting about what I can do. So it's been a long time coming. My brain and my thoughts are in the right place, I really believe, to be able to go about it in this particular way. And so, like I said, I am not endorsing this diet, this approach of eating. I'm just bringing this up, hopefully, as kind of a catalyst to open a conversation with you guys about what it is you're doing. That's the reason why I created this community. Going beyond the scale, it's not, not about me telling all my stuff and my ideas, but I do this here because I'm trying to look for ways to get you guys to engage and communicate with each other, and you have been. It's been great. I am so excited to see how rapidly this community has been growing. This has been really, really good. I'm excited to see that. I wanna see more of that. I wanna see more of you guys supporting each other. Um, so that's the idea. Today's Friday. It's a great day to be free from whatever you did in the past. It's a great day to step into the weekend and really enjoy your weekend, okay? And it's a great weekend to be able to, if you wanna do something next week, if you're trying to get yourself moving in a particular direction, give yourself the next couple of days to be able to really kind of prep yourself, put things together, go out and get some of the ingredients that you're looking for, maybe prep some food over the weekend. So today is the first time I've started this food conversation in going beyond the scale. I probably will drop in with some other food comments throughout the week, but next Friday, same thing. We're going to come back with something else to talk about. Maybe next week I'll come back and say, here's what I learned uh, on doing this in this past week. Because like I said, I've read the book. I have a pretty good idea of it. I've not test driven it yet. I'm also thinking about seeing if Stephanie's going to be game to come on uh, one of my Going Beyond the Scale podcasts. Love to be able to have her, her share her story. Um, because yes, I'm reading the book. And yes, I'm learning some things. But I'm sure there's a whole world of things that she could share with everybody. So... As always, thank you for your generosity of time. Thanks for being here. Uh, love to hear your comments. Share with friends and family. Let people know about what we're doing. If you've got ideas and things you'd like for me to be talking to you about, um, let me know. And I will be back again tomorrow. So until then, enjoy your day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.